Kia ora guys, welcome to the playlist for the physical world for year 10s. This is video 1 and it's about an introduction to forces. So before I start teaching you guys, I'd like for you to watch this video and while you do that, think about what comes to mind when I say forces and what comes to mind when I say motion. That's the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's front crash of a 2009 Chevrolet Malibu and 1959 Chevrolet Bel Air. In slow motion, you can see the differences in how the new and classic cars perform in this version of the traditional frontal offset test. The Institute conducted this test to commemorate its 50th anniversary. It dramatically shows how much improvement has been made in passenger protection since the nonprofit organization opened its doors. The two cars collide in an explosion of metal, glass, and plastics. Where the Malibu crumple zone absorbs much of the crash force is ahead of the windshield, the Bel Air structure allows the lighter car to compress the passenger compartment. The impact is made worse for the Bel Air driver by the lack of airbags, head restraint, and even a seat belt. As a result, injuries to the neck, chest, and both legs would be likely. Consequently, the Bel Air receives a poor rating across the board. On the other hand, the modern Malibu provides good protection, with the dummy movement being well controlled. Measures indicate a low risk to most body regions, though a foot injury would be possible. Beyond the safety gear, advancements in vehicle engineering give the Malibu a clear advantage in this matchup. While classic cars are often considered to be rock solid, this 59 demonstrates how much better today's cars are, and the IHS has played a key role in driving these advancements. In the past 50 years, the Institute has made a real impact. The roads today are safer for it. Alright, so in that video, what kind of things did you think about when I say force? Well, you might have thought about that cars, when they collide, they create a lot of force, or that um, everyday things like the cars on the road can create forces. What about motion? Well, Everyday things can also create motion, and motion could be another word for movement. You might be thinking that for things to move, it needs to be forced by something, and for things to stop moving, like when cars crash into each other, they stop, so the movement stops, and forces are required for things to stop moving as well. Now, I'm not going to play these two videos, but I would like you to go into these slides later on and have a watch for yourselves. They're quite eye-opening. And while you're watching these videos, I'd like you to think about what the consequences are of a car crash. So in this lesson, you're going to be learning about forces and non-contact and contact forces. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define force and describe the effects of a force on an object, describe the difference between contact and non-contact forces, and name the different types of contact and non-contact forces. So what is a force? Well, a force is a push or a pull, and it's a measurement or a quantity that's measured using a unit called Newton, and the symbol for Newton is N. Newton is actually the surname of a person called Isaac Newton, and forces can change the shape of an object, they can change how an object moves, they can change the speed of that object, or they can change the direction that object is traveling. Forces can either be one of two things. They can be a contact force or a non-contact force. They can't be both. A contact force touches the object that it acts on, while a non-contact force acts on something without touching it. So examples of contact forces, so forces that have to touch an object for it to act on it, is a, a thrust force, applied force, friction force, and support force. And examples of non-contact non forces are magnetic force, electrostatic force, and weight force that's produced by gravity. And here's a diagram showing you that there's two types of forces, contact forces and non-contact forces. And under this contact forces bracket, you have some examples like um, buoyancy, thrust force, friction force. And under this non-contact bracket, you've got gravitational forces, but we call that weight force, electrostatic forces, and magnetic forces. You can keep referring to this really cool diagram throughout um, physical world. 
So um, I'd like you to pause this video and go on to the slides, which is on Lemonade, and pick three out of these six videos to watch. And then I'd like you to summarize what you learned from each of these short videos in your book. And obviously, this is all about forces and motion. So now you know a little bit more about forces because you did that summary activity, let's learn about each of the different forces in more detail. So thrust force is an example of a contact force. And it's the force that forcefully pushes an object from itself. So one example is that airplanes use jet fuel, they burn jet fuel, to thrust themselves forward. Another example is that the sprinter uses energy in its muscles to thrust itself forward. Applied force. This is also another example of a contact force that's applied on an object by a person or another object. Okay, so an example here is that this delivery man applies force to the trolley to push it forward. Okay, so it's the one pushing the trolley forward. Friction force is another important contact force. Friction is the force that always opposes an object's motion as surfaces move and rub against each other. There's a typo there. So smooth surfaces, let's say like ice, if you skate on ice, create less friction than rough surfaces like concrete. So if I push this box on ice, it's going to be easier than pushing this box on concrete. That's because the box itself is rough and the concrete is rough. And so when they rub against each other, they're going to oppose each other's motion. When objects move through air, the type of friction that that object experiences is called air resistance. But when objects move through water, the type of friction experienced by that object, or in this case, a turtle, is called water resistance. So planes experience air resistance because they're in air, and this turtle experiences water resistance because they move in, in water. Now, here is a non-contact force. We call this force weight force. And it's the force pulling objects towards the center of the Earth due to gravity. So this table and this book are being pulled closer to the center of the Earth by this force called a weight force, and it's, sim uh, it's symbol as a W. If weight force wasn't there, this book and this table would just float off the ground, okay, and would just be randomly floating around. Where a support force is the upward force on an object that is in contact with another stable object. Okay, so this book is on a table. If the table wasn't there, the book would fall to the ground, okay? That's because the table is exerting, it's giving off an upward force onto this book. This table is a stable object, and it's giving an upward force to the book that it's in contact with, and that makes sure the book doesn't fall through the ground. Now, support force in air is called lift, but support force in water is called buoyancy. So an example of lift is the upward force that keeps this bird flying in the sky. It supports it. Whereas an example of buoyancy is how this water is keeping boats afloat on water. Tension force is another contact force. Tension force is the force experienced by an object, which is usually a rope or a cable, being stretched or pulled. And an example of tension force is when this wrecking ball is pulling down on the cable there's tension force acting on the cable, preventing it from breaking. Magnetic force is our second um, example of a non-contact force. And it's when two magnets are close, they create a pushing or a, full, a pulling force on one another. The two ends of the magnet, so this end here and this end there, are known as the North Pole and the South Pole. That's where it's got the N for North and S for South. Opposite poles attract. So, north and south attract each other. Like poles repel. North-north repel and south-south repel. Finally, we've got electrostatic force, which is our third non-contact force example. Electrostatic forces either attract or repel two charged objects. So, charge means they're either positive or negative, depending on their charge. If it's opposite, the charges attract. If it's like, like same-same, the charges repel from each other. So opposite of plus is minus, and so they attract each other. But if you've got two minuses, they repel each other. 
Now you're probably wondering what's this all about. Well, have you ever seen anyone like rub their a balloon on their head and then the balloon sticks to the wall? That's because when you rub the balloon on your head or on a piece of clothing, especially wool, you are accumulating charges on the on the balloon and that is attracted to the charges on the wall. We'll learn more about electrostatic forces and the electricity topic in physical world. Okay, so here is an important act activity that you have to do. So, for each of the GIFs above, there's three GIFs. There's a balloon GIF, there's a magnet GIF, and there's an airplane GIF. Observe the forces in action. So, what forces are happening here? What's in action here? Where is each force coming from? Is it coming from the balloon? Is it coming from the ground, the, the earth? Is it coming from this magnet? Is it coming from um, this man here? Where is the force coming from? And B, describe how each force changes an object's motion or changes an object's shape. So how do the forces change motion or shape in these examples? Pause this video and write your answers in your book, please. The next activities for you to do is to go on Education Perfect and do the task called Introduction to Forces. Then do the worksheet called Introduction to Forces and Motion Part 1. And this one's a pretty easy worksheet. This lemon here is a shortcut to lemonade. You can also get to lemonade through the Google Classroom website. So this is lemonade and this is found under Year 10 Science under Physical World, okay? If you scroll down or if you click um, here, there, th these are your activities to do. And these are the worksheets that you can click on. So good job, you made it to the end of the lesson. So by now you should be able to define force and describe the effects a force can have on an object. You should also be able to describe the difference between contact and non-contact forces and name the different types of contact and non-contact forces. Please make sure that you watch the next video, which is going to be on motion. It's gonna be a really short video. So until then, have a good night and see you in the next one.